Hi there and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'll show you how you can implement in-app purchase into your games made in GDevelop 5. Okay, so before we begin the tutorial, I want to show you a template which I have uploaded to itch.io. So the template features the GDevelop in-app purchase feature. Here we go. Which shows you how your players can pay for an ad-free game or buy additional health. So we'll open the template real quick right here. Okay, so it's the game and the template comes with a platformer game right here. This is a platformer game. This is the spike. So once it's in collision with the spike, you can head over to the shop events and basically buy health. This health would be awarded to the player in the game scene. So so you can check this out. The link would be in the description below. And if you want to try out the app, I have it uploaded to Google Play Store. So this is it. It's GDevelop IAP examples. So this should show you the GDevelop in app purchase feature in action. It's also a published version of this template right here. So you can check it out. A link would be in the description to download this template and also to check out this app. So let's return to the tutorial. To add in a purchase to your game, you need a developer account on um, the Google Play Console or in the Apple App Store. Also, the in-app purchase would only work after you have uploaded your game to the Google Play Console or the Apple App Store. Therefore, you cannot request for an item during the GDevelop preview. Also, in-app purchase does not support emulators. Therefore, real phones and devices are required to test this out. Now, these items may include paying to remove ads from a game or buying additional health for your play in the game. This is some features we've seen in games. Now let's go around our project structure. So in our project manager, we have this scene, which is a shop scene. Now in our shop scene, we already have some text here. So this is the ads text. It removes ads, nothing um, special goes on here. This is the health text. It shows the health. This displays the price for the ads. And this also displays the price for the health. Now this is the button which the player clicks on to request for the health. So the same goes for this. This is what the player clicks on to request um, for an ad free experience. So you can see the names we have here. This is ads txt, ads price, and ads buy. We also have this health txt, health price, and health buy. So we'll make use of all this in the event right now. So to make use of the in-app purchase, you have to install the extension. Yes, the in-app purchase feature comes as an extension. You can do that by heading into your project manager, search for new extensions and search for in-app purchase. You can type um, IAP and you would see this mobile in-app purchase. It's still experimental, so it may not work um, properly, but you can still try it out. So let's go. You install this project, install this into your project, back, close. And we now have that installed. Now we can make use of the actions and conditions which come with this extension. So let's head into our events. Okay, so in our events, the first thing you need to do is register the item, which is the item you would be selling. Now keep in mind that in this tutorial, we'll try and make it as um, straightforward as possible and easy to follow. So it would look different from what we have in the GDevelop IP example. So the first thing you do is add a new event, add a condition. So at the beginning of the scene, okay, let's add a sub condition. Now we'd register our item right here. You can register your item by going to order actions, scrolling all the way to the bottom right here. And let's go with register an item. So, so in the description, it says register an item for your store. This is required to do all the items you want to display in order from the app. So, okay, that explains it in our internal ID, this would be a unique ID which would be used to identify this item. So you can set it to whatever you want. Just make sure it's unique and different from others because you would use this ID in the Google Play Store. So I'll set this to ads. Now the type of item. We have five types which you can select from. For this would explain um, three of them which are non-consumable, consumable and non-renewable subscription. So consumable, now consumable, just like its name, they're depleted as they're used and they can be purchased again. For example, a health, the player's health can be purchased again. So next we have non-consumable. Now non-consumable are premium features that are purchased once and they don't expire. For example, would be the ad. So for this, we'll set it to a non-consumable. Now next we have non-renewing subscription. Now this provides access to services or content for a limited 
duration so that's the non-renewing subscription so for this would set it to non consumable now the alias name would this is optional so we don't need that okay next we need to register our second item which is health so back into our shop events add an action let's register an item we we'll register we we'll set the id name to health the type it's a consumable so set the type to consumable and hit ok now once you're done registering the item you need to finalize the store registration so add a new event add an action let's go into all the actions scroll the way and select finalize registration so it says finalize store registration do this after registering every product and before ordering or getting information about a product so hit ok and this should finalize the store registration and tell the console that um hey these are all the items we want in this app so with that done we can now add an action to check if the store is ready so add a new event not add condition or the conditions or the way to experimental and store is ready this is the only condition for this extension so it triggers after finalizing the registration when items can be used okay so once the store is ready add a sub condition we need to get the information about our items we're selling so to do that you can add an action or the actions all the way into in-app purchase and click on load item data in a variable so this will get the data of the item we're selling and store the data in a variable so the id of the item would start with ads and the variable we would save it in for this i'll set it to scene ads underscore ads okay so we have that and let's also get the data of the health copy paste and open this up and let's type in health the id would be health and the variable to save the data in would be seen health there we go okay so once we get the data about our item and save it in this scene variable we need to modify this text and display the price right here so we have ads price and health price so back into our events add a new event it would still be a sub event of this events right here so let's go add a an action select ads price let's modify the text of add price and the sign would set to to the value let's go variable the variable string will get our variable name which is scene ads add the period and price so, so this would get the price of the item there we go we have there now add an action let's go for health um health price modify the text sign set to value let's go variable string and scene underscore health period price make don't forget to add your um period price right here this gets the price of the item okay so we now have this okay so next we need to order an item to do that let's add a new events it would be a sub event of this so add a condition and let's go so select how to buy which is a text and once the touch kuso touch is on an object which is this object okay and the touch add a condition so let's go touch or left mouse here we go add a condition let's go touch which is mouse button pressed or touch held left okay and let's add a trigger once trigger once okay so once the cursor touches on health buy let's order the item health so you can just type in order and order an item the id of the item would be health there we go so we can do the same for ads to save us some time we'll just copy this and paste it so let's go health buy we'll change this to ads buy which is a text and order the item ads there we go so at this point in time once an item is ordered let's say health is ordered now we need to check for whatever event goes on if the player purchases it or if an error code or if the player cancel the purchase to do that we have an action which is the watch action so I'll just add that right here add I'll give add an so add an event and so add an action all the actions all the way to in app purchase and update the variable when an item is updated so the id let's start with ads so the events we're searching for we can get the events available happen so next we have the name of the scene variable to set to true when the event happens so 
We'd use this sin variable to check if the player has paid for the item. So we'll name our sin variable adds paid. Mr. P, there we go. So the event to listen to, these are the events we can listen to. You see loaded, updated, error, and approved. We'll be looking for um, approved. So if the payment was successful, then it was approved. So once it's approved, it would set ads paid to true. And once ad paid is true, we can then deliver the item in the game. So let's go add a new event. Now add a condition. And let's get the Boolean value. Boolean. There we go. So the Boolean value of a scene variable, let's start with ads paid. So once add paid is through, which is what this event sets it to. So once this is through, we would um, add a trigger once. While well, true, okay. So once that is true, we need to mark the item as delivered to other actions. Let's go. So then finalize a purchase. The ID name is ads. Okay, so once we finalize the purchase, we need to also change the text we have here to bot. So we'll modify the text. There we go. So modify the text, which is um, ads by. Set this to bot. Okay. So the player has, or should we set it to purchased? I think, yeah, purchased. Okay. So the player has purchased the item, and we can hit OK. Now let's do the same for our health ID. So we can just copy this, copy, paste. Watch for the events approved. The ID would be health. The scene variable to store the data in for health would be health paid. An event to listen to is the approved. So once it's approved, let's go all the way for last event and add a condition. Okay, so let's add a condition and the variable, which is be a Boolean variable. So value of um, where is the Boolean? Okay, so Boolean value of a scene variable, this would be health underscore paid check for if it's true which is good okay and let's trigger once i'll copy this paste it and mac purchase let's get delivered okay that's not showing up here so i'll just head into my other actions all the way to mobile in our purchase and um, finalize a purchase the id would be health Okay, so we have that and would also change the text of our health, which is this text right here, health by. would also change it to purchased, so change this to health by. And there we go. So that's all. And we've successfully implemented an inner purchase into our game, but this won't work yet. We still need to, to register our product on the Google Play Console or the App Store Connect. So for the next stage of this feature, you're going to package your app, publish it, there we go, uh, build for stores, mobile, and you're going to package it as an Android app bundle. For publishing on Google Play Store, set the signing key right there. So once you have this package as an Android app bundle, you head over to your Google Play um, Console right here so here i already have an app for you if you're uploading your app for the first time you head over to production and then kids create new release but for me i already have an app right here so dashboard and this is my app so once you have your app uploaded so your app should be uploaded to one of the testing track or for production right here so once you have your app uploaded you can head over to um, just scroll the way to product which is on the monetized products and in-app products so you click on this and you can head over to create product. So you create a product. Now this is your product ID. You need to get the same ID which you have in GDevelop. Remember we set us as ads and health. So we'd use the ID. So our product ID for this would be ads. Scroll away. Now your product name. I'll set this to um, free ads. Or well, say no to ads. Okay, so say no to ads and you can set the description, uh, maybe remove the ads forever. Cool. Okay. Uh, okay, that's better. And the price, now you can select the price here. So this is where we would receive the price of your item from. So set price and I'll set this to a hundred naira. There we go. And apply prices. There we go. 
apply and okay so we have an option allow users to purchase more than one of this product in a single transaction we don't need that so we leave that unchecked and save this that's saved okay your changes were not saved what's wrong okay so what's wrong oh okay the product id has been used and deleted okay so i've used this id before i've deleted the product in order to create this um, tutorial so i cannot use this um, id again which means i would have to change my id in the whole game which is not really um nice i think that would consume some time in the tutorial so for you you can use ads as your id i can't use it anymore as as it says i have used and deleted it so i'll set this to something random this won't work anymore as it has different IDs right here. So you should make sure your IDs correspond with what you have in this um, place. So I just want to show you the next part after this. So after that, you would save this. And once you have that saved, you need to activate it and you activate this. So with that activated, you can head back into this. So you can see this in our product is now activated and if our product had the same production id which was ads here and ads here it would work so you can go ahead and add in the second id which is health and once again make sure you maintain the same id across your project and what you have in the console don't follow the ads too it must share the same ids it should share the same id so there you go that's how you can implement in app purchase into your game once you're done with this you can go ahead and publish your project to the production track and your in-app purchase should be ready so there you go that's how to create an in-app purchase in gdevelop5 it's very simple easy to follow and if you enjoyed the tutorial don't forget to like subscribe and um, share the video uh, i'll see you guys in my next tutorial thanks for watching